In this video, we will look at function definitions within Haskell. So functions and function definitions look like this. You have a name and a list of arguments and after that an expression. This expression is what the function returns. There, Even though there is a return statement within Haskell, it is not the return statement you know of other languages. So we do not really have a return like we have in imperative languages. So the expression that a function is defined as is what this function returns. If we look at a function application, this is simply done with writing the name and then the arguments. There are no parentheses and no commas uh, between um, the arguments and no parentheses around them. Uh, because this actually is the syntax for another data type that we will look at in a later video. Okay, so let's look at an example. Uh, this in range function checks if this x is between min and max. And here we already have the definition of the function. It is defined as, well, some composition of other functions. You might say, well, there is some comparison done here and then a Boolean AND, which is true. But those comparisons and the Boolean AND are actually function calls. They are just written in an infix uh, notation. How that infix notation works, we will look at uh, in a few slides. It's just very important to see that we do not have something like a return statement. The last expression that is evaluated, or simply the expression that is evaluated, is what we return. So this whole thing, x is uh, bigger or equal to min, and uh, x is smaller or equal to max, that is what our expression is. And here we can see some applications in range of 0, 5, 3 is of course true, and in range of 4, 5, 3 is false. Okay, so let's look at types. Every value in Haskell has a type, and that type is strict. So let's look at how they are defined. You have the name of your value, then two colons, and then the type. So let's look at some examples. For example, here we have the types uh, for x, y, and z, which are an integer, a bool, and a float. There are many different data types, and you should look at them uh, on Haskell.org, for example. Now, functions have their own types. Since functions are just values, this is very important, and we will get to that in another video. But let's look at how types for functions work. Well, you basically write them as a list of types for your arguments and then whatever the type for your return uh, for, for your returned value is. So in this case, we want in range to get three integers and then return a bool. This is not the only type you could assign to this function. Uh, you could also do this with floats, but here in this case we do it with integers. It's very important to see that, for example, here if you call this function with floats, it will return a type error. It will not return anything it will just produce a type error. But of course it works with integers. Now sometimes you want to do something like this, where you save the result of some expression in a variable and then return an end statement. Of course, this would be imperative and not declarative. This is also not proper uh, Haskell syntax. So the question is, how can we do something like that? And we can do it with so-called let bindings, where we bind the result of some expression to a name, like in lower bound, and then produce an end result, the, the last expression, so to speak, um, in relation to whatever names we just defined. It generally works like this, that so we say let then some name equals some expression, and then maybe some other names and other expressions in and then the final expression. Another way of doing this is with a WHERE binding, where you have the final result of your function and in the end say WHERE you know, certain names are defined as certain expressions. Again, it's very important to see that in the example of the LET binding and WHERE binding, things are evaluated only when we need them. Lazy evaluation is still in place. So if you have some... Um, some variable that is never used, then it will never be evaluated. 
Now let's look at how to uh, have a control over the program flow. This can be done with if then else. Now in this case we're using if then else in order to uh, provide the same functionality as the boolean and would have. But it's just important to keep in mind that if then else actually exists. Now let's look at infix functions because functions can be written in an infix syntax or infix notation where you write the function between the arguments. Um, it is very important and you should try this out to get the type of some operators, maybe in GHCI. You can do that with colon t. If you do that and then write the name of your function or of the operator with parentheses around them, you get their type. Now, this might be confusing right now what this num a to a a a means, but we will get to that in a later video. It's just important to know that you can write any uh, function with two arguments in this infix style by putting these little uh, quotes around them.